Many PCs have become almost routine, and I've looked at a lot of different ones, especially units with the Ryzen 7840HS, which is one of my favorite CPUs because it's really fast for gaming with that integrated 780M GPU, but it's also just a very well-rounded CPU in general. You're going to get 8 cores, 16 threads, they're all big cores with AMD, and it's just really freaking fast. It's got DDR5 under the hood as well, 32 gigabytes of that, uh, running at 5600 megahertz. Let's go ahead and just look at some of the stuff that's going on right here with, with this. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View, Keys, and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Before we get too deep, I want to tell you this is one of the fastest I've seen. That's why I'm kind of surprised. But there's a couple other things that surprised me here. Now it's got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and normally with the AMD stuff, you see a real tech, but right here we have an Intel Ethernet controller. This is the i266, I'm sorry, the i226V. So if you're running VMs, if you want to install Proxmox or something like that, it might be a little bit easier. I've had pretty good luck with the real techs, but some people seem to really like the Intel. They're both great. You've also got Wi-Fi 6 right here. There's that 780M with 4 gigabytes of DDR5. Here's the information on the 7840HS. I believe this turbo is up to 5.1. TJ Maxx is 92 degrees. This is a very fast implementation. What are they doing to make it so fast? Like I just said, they're drawing a lot of power, but it's getting warm. That's the trade-off. It's really fast, but it gets pretty warm. It doesn't go over the T-junction junction max. It stays five or six degrees under the T-junction max. I'm okay with it. Of course, it's always nice to see it 20 degrees below the TJ max or whatever. I'm not going to complain that much because it's so freaking fast. Now the stock clock's 3.8. It turbos up to 5.1. So the TDP when you're just chilling is like 35, but it'll go up about 50, 55, somewhere in that range. Doesn't pull too much power. You got 16 megabytes of L3 cache. And then let's look at the ports. So we got a couple 3.2 USB. We also have USB Type-C and a headphone microphone combo port right there in the front plus your power button. The USB on the front is a 10 gigabit per second USB Type-C. And then we also have a clear CMOS button right there in the front. The case is nice and sleek, made out of solid materials. It feels really solid in your hands. I hadn't played with one of these before, so I didn't know how it was going to be. Flipping it around to the back, we have HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4, as well as USB 4, which will support up to 40 gigabits per second of data transfer. You can support three monitors at the same time. Then we've got our 2.5 gigabit LAN, and below that we have a USB 2.0 port, which I always like to see. We don't need everything to be USB 3.2 or USB 4. Now you can see we have some large fins exposed just above everything. Now as far as upgrades go, it's pretty easy to take the bottom off. You just remove four screws, and there's actually a little tab you grab and pull up the bottom. And then we have two areas here. Now the first area is just a little sled, and you can install another M.2 right there. So if you want some extra expandability, take off the back, install the extra M.2, leave the 30 2 gigabytes of RAM that's hiding below. Just leave it there. Don't worry about it. But if you want to mess with the RAM or any of the other internal components, you can remove this sled with a few screws. Just don't rip it out because it's got a fan and some ribbon cables attached. Just be careful with that, that little fan there. Move it aside and then you have access to the crucial memory that's underneath there, the crucial DDR5 memory. So I don't think many people are going to be doing that, but it's just nice that we have some cooling under here. It's not noisy. I've seen some of these fans that are extremely noisy. I didn't hear any particular noise that I thought, oh, that's the little fan. So cheers to them for that. All right, let's jump in and take a look at some benchmarks and then we'll sum it up. All right, so Dragon's Dogma 2, I don't expect this to play, but I just want to be playing this instead of making this video, so I'm going to test it out. All right, we're going to try this on 1080p, and we're going to put this on the low quality setting and see how it runs. So on 1080p, it's uh, it wants to run. It really does, but it's it's a bit much. So yeah, we're... It, it, I don't know, it doesn't feel terrible when you play this, but it's definitely dropping below that 30 FPS. So let's crank it down to 720p and just see how we do. All right, the thing about 720p is, ooh, on a, <laughs> ooh, on a 1440p screen, you know, I'd have to sit back pretty far for this to look good. I'm impressed that it can play this fast. You know, I'm actually really impressed. You know, like the Intel XE stuff, 
I can't even touch this. So it's very impressive that this game can even play, but alas. All right, running Unigen Valley, this is a very good score, 71.4. That, that, that's great. This thing is really freaking fast. If you're playing along at home, 29.85 is the score. Minimum FPS of 34, so that's great. And you can see while we're playing, it stays in the 60s. So yeah, the, the highest there was 70. Completely acceptable temperatures for gaming completely acceptable and it's also not that loud. Let's run a little bit of superposition. We're running this on 1080p medium, score 5202. Look at that, the minimum is higher than I think the maximum on a lot of the Intel systems. These AMDs, especially the ones with the 780M graphics, are just killing the Intels. I can't imagine why anybody would buy one of the Intel mini PCs if they wanted a game. So there's the average 38.91, very respectable score for a tiny PC on 1080p medium because this taxes not only the GPU, but also the CPU. All right, so take a look at this on the high setting. We're getting above 30 FPS and you know, the minimum was 29. So it stays above 30 FPS almost the entire time. Don't wanna drop below 30. So let's see if we can get it above that. I'm gonna run this on the medium setting and I always just turn off the motion blur because I have a personal vendetta against it. So motion blur off, running this on the medium setting. And I want you to look and how good this game looks on the medium setting because this is something that I think looks better than a lot of other games on high because it has not only high fidelity but it also has art direction. Our average is 46.39, the minimum was 39.26. It's extremely stable, it's extremely playable, and this is a very good score for this little system. I always like to look at some of the new AAA games or some of the big fancy graphics games, games like Cyberpunk, what's not quite new, but kind of new, you know, stuff that really pushes these to the limit. But really, there's a gazillion indie games out there and a gazillion games that don't require enormous amounts of horsepower that are going to play great on this system. I want to take a minute to recommend something. They sent me over a key for a game called Amedama. Now, this is a new game from Japan. Some really interesting sort of samurai style sword play going on right here. It's a little bit intricate and complex. There's all kinds of stuff going on with the story, but it's hilarious within the first 10 minutes. I have uh, died. My soul has come out of my body. I've possessed a frog and a Shiba Inu. And, and then after that, I was able to possess an old man and then possess an Izakaya employee. And so I'm running around as this Izakaya employee, like cutting people with a butcher knife. So if you're someone who likes punishing brutal combat, I mean, it's a samurai game it's going to be difficult but if you like like stuff that in my opinion is like dark souls style difficult combat i mean it might be a little bit easier once you learn it but it's not really my kind of thing so maybe i'm, I'm not sure if i'll stick around for it but I, even though i'm curious but if this says something that looks interesting to you this will run great on a system like this and it's also it was a, quite a bit of fun so i like you know raise awareness whenever i see something cool so if you think amedama looks cool then check it out i'll put a link in the description this is crystal mark retro and it tests all kinds of different things. CPU, you can see 2D, 3D tests. This is not Crystal Disk Mark. This is not Crystal uh, Disk Info. This is Crystal Mark, just the standard old Crystal Mark. And this is the retro skin. But you can go and grab this and do a test if you wanted to. There's our read and write for our hard drive to give you an idea of what kind of speed we're dealing with there. And then there's the rest of our scores. Just wanted to show you this in case you wanted to go and test it yourself. Let's run Geekbench 6. So here's our test results for single core 1427 and multi core 9624. And then I'll scroll down here so you can see all the individual test scores. If you're trying to figure out exactly how it's going to do some specific thing, that'll tell you. There's our OpenCL score with the AMD 780M. There's the individual scores. Next up, let's take a look at Cinebench. There's our multi core score 15025. Pretty good score. You know, it's about what I expected. So. <laughs> You can test it again at home, eight cores, 16 threads going on there. Take a look at that single core score, and it's reporting a really high score, but we're only comparing that to some of the 11th gen Intel. Some of the 12th gen Intel are indeed faster for the single core, but I think altogether these Ryzen's are faster. And the single core, I'll have to go back and double check, but the Intel's are really fast, but I love these AMDs for me to get so much speed for the, for the size. All right, let's hop over into Premiere and just see how it feels. I've got some 4K video footage right here. Now, normally I edit these things on half resolution, but I'm gonna crank this up to full 4K resolution just to see how snippy it feels when I'm zipping around there on the timeline. Feels pretty good to me. It feels about like I, you know, I'm using any other system. All right, let's do, uh, let's do a cross dissolve and see how that feels. All right, so the cross dissolve does not feel amazing. It feels okay. Seen better when it comes to the cross dissolve, doing the effects and everything there, but it's not terrible either. And it does feel really snappy while you're editing. So you can absolutely edit 4k video and also a little trick just turn it down to half resolution when you're editing. As soon as you press the pause button or press the space bar, it snaps back to full resolution. It's only half resolution while it's playing in the timeline. So that's how I recommend editing. Anyway, pretty fast. 
time to do a bit of a stress test with 8064. I've let this run for 24 minutes. It maxes out the CPU to stress it out. And we don't have any throttling. I don't believe this. No, that score is not correct. <laughs> 43? No, no, no. All right, let's see if we can figure out what the real temperatures are. Now here I have hardware info up. And we're going to scroll down and take a look. There we go. Ooh, that's getting hot. Let's let this, this is just started. So I'm going to let this run for just a minute and come back and see how hot it's getting. After several minutes of running, you see that the, the highest temperature there was 87.2. It's a little bit too hot for me. Now you're only going to see this when you're taxing the CPU at 100%, so I wouldn't recommend doing this. This is just a test, and hopefully in a real world environment, you won't be running it at 100% for, for long unless you're doing tons of rendering. But even then, it's usually not as bad as A to 64. All right, as far as the sound goes, we do a little sound test here. It's about 43 decibels just at the desk while I'm just sitting here. Now let's test this about one to two feet away from the unit itself. And we're getting 48.9. Not bad. Um, you know, I've heard units that are much louder than this. You can definitely hear it. It's an audible whir, but it's not entirely unpleasant. It's not rattling. It's not making any high-pitched noises. And it's constant. It's not whirring up and down. That stuff drives me crazy when it always whirs up and down and up and down. So, so the bottom line for me with this system is that it is faster than the other 7840 HS systems that I've seen. It's almost as fast as the Geekom A7 that I tested, which is a Ryzen 9 system that beats it on pretty much everything, but only by a couple FPS in gaming. So, you know, the, the GPU's clocked, I think, a couple hundred megahertz higher on that one, being the Ryzen 9, this is just the Ryzen 7. But they're pushing this Ryzen 7 to its limit for these little mini PCs. See, the thing is, this one performs almost like those Ryzen 9 parts. So Trig Key has me very impressed with this unit, and I'm curious to see what else they have. I do wish it was a tiny bit quieter, but it's a constant fan noise. It's not an annoying fan noise, so I'm going to forgive them for it being a few decibels louder than I would like for it to be, because almost all of these mini PCs are a few decibels louder than I would like them to be, because it's the nature of it. you got a tiny little computer, and you got to cool it, and you cool it with a smaller fan, and the small fans have louder noises. That's just the way of it. I'm going to show you some similar units right now, because this one's priced at $569. Here it is in uh, UK, if you're there in the UK. They've also got it in I think Canada and Japan as well. I'll put all the links in the description. But take a look at this unit. Extremely similar from Mini's form. I love this little machine. This one's smaller. So if you need the tiniest thing ever, then this is really nice. But it's slightly slower for more money. I, I love Mini's form, but for the money, slightly slower. Then the Geekom A7, you can see right here the price, $699 versus $569. And this one's almost the same speed. Like this is a couple FPS faster. But this, oh, this is the Ryzen, sorry, the Ryzen 9 version. I don't have the Ryzen 7 version of this. I've got the Ryzen 9 version and it's like two FPS faster in most, most things. This is a very good deal. Anyway, we'll leave it with that. Let me know what you think of this in the comments and I'll see you there. If you, you know, I've talked a lot about gaming. If you don't want to do gaming and you just want to do like Proxmox or VMware or something, this might be a pretty good deal since it has that integrated Intel and a super fast AMD Ryzen CPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM plus an expandable M.2. Something to think about. All right. See you in the comments.